This is probably the most expensive flashlight I have ever bought. It cost a lot. It cost so much. It was one of those things that you swither about getting or not because you don't know if you can justify it. I managed to talk myself into getting it because my mum and dad lived in a rural area and they were prone to blackouts and storms uh, because it's all overhead lines. So I bought it for them and it actually did its job really well. This has totally paid its way. Uh, my dad, who's a complete technophobe, or was a complete technophobe, absolutely loved it. He particularly liked the fact he could light the front of the house with it. And when I shined it at the table, oh dear, all 10 of those 5mm LEDs uh, don't really compare that favourably with a Nightcore tube. A modern little rechargeable light. Because things have evolved. That's one 5mm LED. A high power 5mm LED. These are the original Nichia. 10, uh, 10 of the 5mm LEDs from when they just came out. They weren't even... They were inefficient compared to modern white LEDs. And it is back in the era that, you know, if I went to Maplin at that time, they might have had them available for £10 each. And you wouldn't have gone on eBay and just bought a 1000 for 20 bucks. It's just... Times have changed dramatically. So uh, this thing, its main claim was that, you know, it'll run for a month on one set of D-cells. And it does have the D-cells inside. It's got a plastic case. It's worth mentioning that it's so old that everything's degrading a little bit. The rubber is all scuffed up from being used for real work. Uh, but it's also, it's gone sticky as plastic sometimes does. And it's got that hard plastic. It's got this proper O-rings. And then it's, well, it's got a round seal here. Uh, not necessarily, it's just a flat plasticky o-ring. Uh, but it's then got this rubbery coating that has degraded and gone a bit sticky. Worse than that, and I'm going to open this up, because uh, it may well be a priceless antique LED flashlight in relative terms, but uh, the reason the cable ties here is it's holding it together because the plastic has split. And that's probably my fault because I remember it had been in use so long on the original batteries that I thought, you know, the batteries are going to leak if I don't change them. So I changed the batteries, but to get this open, it was really seized shut. It took so much force. It was like a towel in each hand, really straining to get it open. Once I've got it open, I put a smear of Vaseline inside. That's not a good idea in plastic. Don't put Vaseline in plastic. It is the kiss of death to plastics. So now it's open, we can take a look at it. Now, the intensity... I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to use, I can see it's got a little locking ring in here. Let's get this in. I'd like to say I've had this open already, but not, not in the last 20 years. When I bought it, I opened it before giving it to my parents as a gift. Hmm. I just had to see what was inside. I thought it was going to be something special. I don't think it was. The LEDs, incidentally, because they were new, uh, at that time, the typical LED current was 20 milliamps, and that's exactly what they're running in that. If I power this from the bench supply at 4.5 volts, I'm just slipping a ring off in here, uh, it draws 200 milliamps on the button. So it is running the LEDs at... How's this going to come out? It is running them at... Uh, that seems to come out, I think. It is running them at 20 milliamps each. Oh, I'm not sure how this is actually designed to come out. Is it? Oh, right, it's using that wedge system. Oh. Oh, right, okay. Okay, what do we have down here? Oh, we have another little locking ring. Oh, a little bit of corrosion in there as well. Okay. Uh, I'll let you see in there. And then we shall go in deeper. I may actually need to to pause just to see this because uh, it is so deep in there that um, well, no, I'm just going to jam a torch in my mouth. This is, I've got loads of headlights. I could put one of them on, but no. I'm just going to do this. Oh, it's coming out. It's coming out. Okay. Oh. Okay, what I'm seeing here, oh, I remember, I remember this. It's potted, and I remember picking away at some of the potting. Right, okay, we're going to have to get all the potting away now. This is, this is destroying history right in front of your eyes, because uh, this really is like 
taking apart an antique, but you know what? If I take it apart on video, then you can all see what was in the first ever white LED flashlights. Now, the true aficionados of LEDs, oh, actually, those LEDs are stood up on their leads. They're not pressed right against the circuit board. That is also one of the sort of requirements of uh, LEDs at that time that you couldn't really sit them. It was recommended, but it still is recommended, you don't sit circuit boards hard against a circuit board. I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, most people do it, but it was to avoid stress on the leads. But they've played it by the book here. This is very, very silicony, silicon. silicon. Um, I may have to pause while I pick some of this off. I wonder if it's going to be one resistor. I didn't check if there's any circuitry in here. There's nothing. Oh, there is. No, that's just a switch. A little click on, click off switch. Um, and that, there is a circuit board, but it's, it's kind of... It's not even the surface mount era. I don't think there'll be a resistor in that. I think it's going to be on here. Right, tell you what, I shall pause momentarily while I get some of the silicon off and then we'll see what's under here. Right, one moment, please. Continuing on, very, very hard removing the silicon, but there's a little 8th watt resistors down here, little carbon film ones, rated about 12 ohms each. And... When you actually power this directly, the circuit board directly from, well, let's do that. Let's power it directly from here and see how it compares now because there's quite a drop over that switch. It might have been the fact that the switch is kind of old. So if I do this now, it's a bit brighter. Let's be fair. Let's align all the LEDs up and put it up against the Nightcore tip again. Tube, should I say. It, it can't compete against the Nightcore tip. But then you wouldn't expect it to. The voltage cross LEDs was also quite high. It was about 3.5 volts. They were very early white LEDs. So let's uh, bring in the that and try it again. I'm spreading the light everywhere at the moment. Oh, that's a fairer comparison. That would have been brighter than the uh, tip. It's full setting, but it wouldn't compare with, uh, should I say, the, the tube. But it's not going to compare with the... Yeah, it's not going to compare... No, it's definitely not going to compare with modern tiny ones. But what do you expect? It's 20 years old. It is vintage. So there we go. The silicon, I'm guessing, largely waterproofing, but might have also been a little factor in heat dissipation. They, if they, if, I couldn't see. I took this apart. I was thinking, is there anything else in here? Is there a, some sort of resistor? But there's not. So um, it is running the LEDs quite hard. It's running them a, a closer to 50 milliamps each when you connect it. Well, I'll tell you exactly what it's running them at. So this is a 4.5 volts, low loss with my super big fat leads now. And uh, 4.5 volts, the it meter is displaying 600 volts rapidly falling down. Oh no, about 600, uh, not 600 volts, 600 milliamps. That's quite, that's quite a high power. Uh, but there was some loss across the, the switch and uh, connections. But there we go. It's kind of disappointingly dull these days, but, you know, it's a little bit of a history. It's a worthy thing to have. At the time, it was really exciting because it, had got, it was the step from tungsten to LED, and it was really radical. Um, hopefully, I've not been out of shot for that. I forgot I'd zoomed in. Uh, let's zoom back out. My apologies if I, if I was out of shot for any of that. But there we go. That's what's inside the Lucido uh, C10 with its one-month battery life. Um, really expensive at the time, but ultimately, at the time, it was what there was. It was just, it was the, the epic flashlight of its time. <laughs>